Hello, my name is Troy Atkins and I am the founder and owner of Atkins Capital Management. Atkins Capital Management is a housing advisory services company. I want to talk to you today about the key events that have transpired in the U.S. residential housing market during the second quarter of 2024. During the second quarter of this year, a review of the State of the Nation's Housing Report by the Joint Center for Housing Studies of Harvard University and the monetary policy actions of the Federal Reserve to help curtail the impact of inflation on the U.S. economy were the primary topics of conversation. This movie presentation also provides an overview of the home price level for a select group of cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index, and it provides a wealth of information for prospective home buyers to use to make a prudent home purchase decision. This presentation was written, narrated, edited, produced, and published by Troy Atkins. I am the founder and owner of Atkins Capital Management. Atkins Capital Management is a privately owned and independently operated company. Our exclusive focus is on residential real estate. ACM is not affiliated with any parties associated with the residential housing industry. Our mission is to bridge the gap in the residential housing market, where deficiencies in education, public policy, regulation, product structure, and personnel have created an environment where prospective home buyers need objective information and useful analytical tools in order to help them make a prudent home purchase decision. As an investment professional, I have more than 20 years of real estate analysis experience, more than 10 years of institutional investment consulting experience, more than eight years of freelance financial and investment writing experience, and more than five years of state government experience at the agency and legislative levels. I am also the author of more than 25 published financial and investment articles. Accordingly, I am a 2023 inductee into Marquis Who's Who. For more information about my background, skills, and experience, please visit the Atkins Capital Management website. For the second quarter of 2024, the comprehensive JCHS report makes the case that the affordability, accessibility, and sustainability of home ownership must be improved for home ownership to remain a viable and beneficial choice. During the second quarter of 2024, the annual release of the State of the Nation's Housing Report by the Joint Center for Housing Studies of Harvard University provided a wealth of information pertaining to the U.S. residential housing environment. The following is an executive summary of the most pertinent findings. Nationwide, housing unaffordability remains the key challenge facing both prospective home buyers and homeowners. Home ownership is less affordable than it has been in decades. High home prices, high interest rates, and the limited supply of homes for sale have raised the cost of home buying to historical heights, pricing out millions of potential first-time home buyers and slowing home ownership growth. Home ownership is out of reach for millions of potential homeowners at a time when large numbers of millennial households are at a prime home buying age. Many current homeowners are disincentivized to put their homes on the market, either because they are not confident that they can find a suitable replacement given the current supply shortage, or because they have a mortgage with a below market interest rate. The lock-in effect, whereby current homeowners with below market interest rates are disincentivized to move, is a pervasive problem for the housing market. The significant shortage of housing units is attributable to the extended period of low construction since 2008. Constraints from restrictive zoning and regulatory policies, the high costs and limited availability of developed land, the price of building materials, skilled labor shortages, 
and financing limitations increase housing costs and reduce the amount of housing development. According to the JCHS, the high cost of home buying will likely persist and possibly even increase further, underscoring the need for new construction to help meet demand. For the second quarter of 2024, an overview of home ownership illustrates that home prices and home equity are significantly higher than pre-pandemic levels. The total number of homeowner households is approximately 85.9 million. The national home ownership rate is 65.9%. The national home ownership rate is up from the post Great Recession low of 63.4% in 2016. The number of U.S. households grew by 1.7 million from the prior year, far outpacing the 1.1 million households added annually on average over the previous decade. A major contributor to household growth is immigration, which peaked at 3.3 million. Older adults who are less likely to move than younger households are an increasing share of homeowner households. To the extent households are relocating, they are leaving large metropolitan areas for the suburbs and smaller metro areas. Home prices are 47% higher than pre-pandemic levels. Homeowner equity is up 37% for the last four years, from $23.2 trillion in 2019 to $31.8 trillion in 2023. The recent rapid home price appreciation has provided substantial equity gains for many homeowners. The average homeowner is also enjoying a below average mortgage loan interest rate. The average mortgage home equity is $298,000. Median homeowner wealth was $396,500. For the second quarter of 2024, an overview of homeowner costs illuminates that there are more than 19.7 million cost burdened homeowners. The housing cost burden for homeowners, which is the number of homeowners spending more than 30% of their income on housing costs, grew by 3 million to 19.7 million between 2019 and 2022. Nearly one in four homeowner households are now cost burdened. The housing cost burden trend is getting worse between 2019 and 2021 the number of cost burden homeowners experienced the largest increase since the height of the housing boom in 2005 to 2007. Homeowner cost burdens are increasing due to growing property taxes and insurance costs. Rising costs in these categories will threaten household stability. Home insurance premiums grew on average by 21% between 2022 and 2023. Single-family property taxes grew an average of 4.1 percent between 2022 and 2023. To quantify the housing cost burden, in the first quarter of 2024, a household needed to earn $120,000 annually to afford the median-priced home. In comparison, only $82,000 was needed in the first quarter of 2021. The housing cost burden that is attributable to natural disasters is also a significant problem for homeowners. The number of billion dollar disasters has grown from an annual average of three in the 1980s to 28 in 2023. At least 60.5 million housing units are located in areas with at least moderate risk. The susceptibility of housing stock to the increasing damage from climate-related disasters 
is becoming an ongoing concern for the housing industry. For the second quarter of 2024, an overview of housing sales illuminates that existing home sales fell to a near three-decade low. In 2023, 4.1 million existing homes were sold, including 3.7 million single-family homes and 428,000 condominiums and cooperative units. The annual sale of existing homes was at the lowest level in nearly 30 years. Existing home sales were down 33% from the 6.1 million homes sold in 2021. The median sales price for existing homes was $389,300. Home prices ended the year up 5.6%. In contrast, New single-family home sales climbed modestly last year, up 4% to 666,000 units. New home sales constituted 15% of all single-family home sales. However, new home sales were well below the pandemic peak of 822,000 units in 2020. A recurring theme from last year's JCHS report is that investors have continued to purchase single-family homes at an elevated rate. This has been the trend since 2021. In 2022, investors bought 26% of single-family homes in the fourth quarter, just shy of the record-high 28% share recorded earlier in the year and well above the 16% share averaged in the three years immediately preceding the pandemic. 1.1 million existing homes were for sale in March of 2024, down from 1.7 million in March of 2019. Successful home buyers reported that finding a home was the most difficult step in the home buying process. Finding a home was more challenging than obtaining a mortgage or saving for the down payment. For the second quarter of 2024, an overview of the housing supply illuminates that there is a chronic housing shortage, particularly for affordable housing. The pace of new single-family construction units rose to an average seasonally adjusted annualized rate of 1.06 million in the last quarter of 2023. New homes have constituted about a third of available single-family inventory since 2021. New multifamily construction starts fell 14% to 472,300 units last year. However, in 2022, multifamily construction reached its highest number since the mid-1980s. The number of multifamily starts rose 15.5% from an already high 474,000 units in 2021 to 547,000 units in 2022, the highest level since 1986. Manufactured home shipments numbered just 89,000 in 2023, a 21% decline from last year. Manufactured home shipments averaged 247,000 units annually in the 1980s and 291,000 in the 1990s. The JCHS determined that the state of the nation's housing is facing a national housing shortage that is estimated at more than 1 million units. Home builders and developers face numerous barriers to providing housing at the cost, quantities, and locations needed most. Housing supply is being curtailed by a multitude of complex factors. High interest rates and rising inflation were the most frequently cited challenges facing home builders. Other key challenges for home builders and developers that impeded efforts to build the amount and variety of housing needed included the high costs and limited availability of developed land, the price of building materials, and the cost and availability of skilled labor.
Financing limitations also increased the cost of building homes and reduced the amount of housing development. Restrictive zoning policies and regulatory policies for single family homes further curtailed permit approvals. According to the JCHS, additional lower cost housing needs to be built, but expanding development will require zoning reform to support a broader range of housing types and investments and off-site construction methods that could reduce development costs. The JCHS also believes that greater housing densities and more diverse housing types could also help mitigate the chronic shortage of housing. With this overview of the JCHS report in mind, let me now turn your attention to our analysis of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy. The general theme of this section is that the Fed has set forth hawkish monetary policy via higher interest rates to curb inflation. During the second quarter of this year, the Federal Reserve continued to convey that it is primarily concerned about reducing rampant inflation levels in the U.S., but also stressed concern about its impact on the economy. Accordingly, the Fed maintained the target range for the federal funds rate that was set at 5.25% and 5.5% in July of 2023. The federal funds rate has not been at this high of a level since January 31st of 2001. The Fed was holding the federal funds rate at around zero as recently as the first quarter of 2022. The Fed has raised rates 11 consecutive times since March of 2022. Calls for rate cuts are now a prevalent topic of debate, and the Fed is poised to cut rates by at least 50 basis points by the end of this year. Due to a host of economic factors, the national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed rate loan began the quarter at 6.79% and ended the quarter at 7.14%. The national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed rate loan reached an all-time low of 2.67% on December 17th of 2020 and the all-time high of 18.63% in October of 1981. The following points were made by the Joint Center of Housing Studies of Harvard University. The rate for the 30-year fixed rate mortgage peaked at 7.79% in October of 2023, the highest in more than 20 years. 58% of all homeowners with a mortgage loan enjoy rates under 4%. Homeowners are on average paying less for mortgage debt as a percentage of disposable income than at any time since 1980. 25% of all homeowners with a mortgage loan enjoy rates below 3%. This rate is significantly lower than the 6.75% average on a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage at the end of 2022. With this overview of the Federal Reserve's monetary policy actions in mind, let me now explain the proprietary analytical methodology that was developed by Atkins Capital Management to analyze the home price level of the cities that constitute the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index. From a finance-based perspective, our proprietary valuation methodology analyzes the relationship between home price levels, household income levels, the percentage of pre-tax household income allocated to housing, and the cost of debt for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage loan. From the first analytical perspective, our valuation methodology calculates the justified mortgage loan interest rate, which represents the cost of debt that justifies the home price level with the household income level, 
taking into account that 28% of household income will be allocated to servicing the mortgage loan. From the second analytical perspective, our valuation methodology calculates the justified percentage of household income amount, which represents the percentage of pre-tax household income that justifies the home price level with the household income level, taking into account the prevailing national average mortgage loan interest rate. Based on Atkins Capital Management's proprietary housing analytical methodology, this section of our presentation pertains to ACM's comprehensive housing analyses. The general theme of this section is that the home price levels for 52 cities within the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index are overpriced. The 52 overpriced cities in the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index were categorized based on their justified percentage of household income amount. Los Angeles, San Francisco, Newark, New York City, and Boston were identified as the five most overpriced cities in the index. In terms of a relative price level analysis, it is not possible to justify the home price level for the top five overpriced cities by reducing the 30-year fixed rate mortgage loan interest rate from 7.14% to 0%. In addition, in terms of a relative price level analysis, it is not possible to justify the home price level for the top five overpriced cities as underpriced because prospective home buyers would have to spend more than the respective justified percentage of household income amounts, which fall within the unrealistic range of 84% to more than 100% of household income. Therefore, in order to justify the median home price level for each city, the median required household income level would need to increase to a level within the respective range of $137,493 and $408,138. Moreover, based on the median household income level, the quarter ending national average mortgage loan interest rate, and the assumption that no more than 28% of pre-tax household income should be spent in order to repay the principal and interest costs of a mortgage loan, the justified home price level for the top five overpriced cities fell within the respective range of $142,800 and $411,580. Prospective homebuyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the level of overpricing of homes in their community. On the other side of the spectrum, based upon the justified percentage of household income amount, eight cities in the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index were classified as underpriced for the second quarter of 2024. Detroit, Cleveland, Jackson, Des Moines, and Fargo were identified as the top five most underpriced cities in the index. In order to classify homes in the top five underpriced cities as overpriced, the national average mortgage loan interest rate would have to increase from 7.14% to more than the respective justified mortgage loan interest rate amount for each city, which fell within the range of 8.2% and 19.7%, or it would have to be deemed imprudent by prospective home buyers to spend as much as the respective justified percentage of household income amount for each city to repay the cost of a mortgage loan. Now that our quarterly residential housing market review is complete, here is some valuable information that you should consider. First, you can conduct similar housing analyses for your community and for your specific home purchase opportunities by subscribing to use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer on Amazon.com. Simply search for residential real estate software to watch our 15-minute movie presentation and to subscribe to use our software. Second, there is a wealth of additional housing information on the Atkins Capital Management website, including our comprehensive home price index, interactive map of city housing analyses, news feed of pertinent housing information, housing methodology patent application, 
reverse mortgage loan analysis, movie catalog of quarterly residential housing market reviews, housing valuation methodology presentations, and tactical and strategic residential real estate hedge fund model portfolio. By visiting ACM, you can gain valuable insights into the housing market and make well-informed home purchase decisions. This is Troy Atkins saying thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.